And in terms of your arms, you feel comfortable? Yeah. And, okay, all right. Paul Theron teaches advanced film makeup at the Academy of Art in San Francisco. Is, so make sure you get a good little glob of it there, too. He's agreed to take me back 40,000 years and fix me up on a date with a Neanderthal. It's a big night, you know. It's the prom, so make me look good. <laughs> Now suppose we wanted to make a movie about a Neanderthal guy. How would we begin to make up this guy to make him look more like a Neanderthal? You'd want to make the face bigger. So you would add stuff to the front of the face and pull the face out as much as you could. My new face isn't a mask. It goes on in pieces. An enormous nose. Swept back cheekbones. Uh, hold that down. In fact, hold that down. That's good really heavy brow ridges. His face is enormous. It's 20 to 30 or 40 percent larger than any modern human. Enlarging the back of my head takes a pound of silicone and a pint of glue. You could at least approximate the shape of the Neanderthal head by adding plastic or whatever they do and give it this characteristic long shape. It's almost as if somebody took their, their fist inside the brain and just sort of punched, punched it out backwards. And flowing from that enormous head, red hair. Some Neanderthals were fair-skinned redheads, according to DNA evidence. This would have helped their bodies generate vitamin D in the weak northern sun. It's funny, though. If you think about all the reconstructions you see about Neanderthals, they always give them bad hair. Yeah. For some reason, everybody assumes that they had no hairstyle. Um, and I wonder about that. No, no, just look at the brown. After four hours in the chair, my time travel is complete. I think we're, we're there. Oh, it looks good with the way you're wearing it. I am alive! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, I'm ready for the streets. If I saw this guy walking down the street uh, carrying a briefcase and a cell phone, would I know at a glance there was something substantially different, or would he pass for one of us? I think you would probably figure out this was an extremely ugly and strange human being. But you probably wouldn't want to like rush and put him in a zoo. I mean, you'd just simply uh, think, gosh, he's got a long, low head and very big brow ridges and a ridiculously large face and, and maybe a strange nose. Perhaps he needs to see a dentist, but you probably wouldn't otherwise react too strongly, I suspect. How are you guys doing? 